so now that we've learned our polyatomic ions, now it's time for us to start taking these polyatomic ions and taking some uh, chemical nomenclature and going from a name uh, back to the formula for these compounds. So the first one we'll start with here is sodium nitrate. Um, if I'm going to do this traditionally in a classroom, I'm going to tell students, um, go to your periodic table, <clears throat> find your charge if you can, or if it's a polyatomic ion, use the uh, lesson that we just did to get the charge and the formula for that. Sodium is in group 1A, so sodium is a plus one ion. Sodium's got one outer shell electron, one valence electron, loses that electron to form a plus one cation. Nitrate from Nick in Nick the Camel, if I remember Nick, it is N-I-C-K, so there are three consonants. There is one vowel, so that tells me that nitrate is NO3 with a negative one charge. Now, traditionally, I would say to students that are, that are good in math, we're looking for a least common multiple. So I'll do these with least common multiple, and then I'll, I'll show another way, uh, maybe to help you if you're struggling just a little bit uh, in terms of least common multiple. So here, I've got a plus one, I've got a minus one. I'm, I'm looking for the least common multiple of one and one. Started with a fairly easy one here. Smallest number that one and one, smallest whole number that they both divide into is one, which means I need one of these. And since this is a polyatomic ion, just temporarily, <clears throat> I'm gonna put parentheses around it and I need one of these. When I put them together in a one-to-one -one fashion, plus one to minus one, I get a neutral compound. So my formula is going to be Na. I'm not going to write subscript 1 uh, since there's only one of them. Same thing with the nitrate. I don't need the parentheses since there's only one. It's simply just NaNO3. Now, I'm going to do this on each one. This one's fairly simple. But if I'm going to do this, I can do it with Legos as well. I can say, okay, sodium here is a plus 1. So that's a single studded Lego. It's a plus 1. Nitrate, on the other hand, is going to be a minus one. So there's one port there. And I want to put these together to make a perfect rectangle. Can't have any stair steps or anything when I'm done. So to do that, simply just snap them together and I've got this symmetrical shape. So one sodium, one nitrate, NaNO3. The next one I'm going to do here is potassium sulfate. Again, I'm going to go to the periodic table uh, potassium is another uh, alkali metal, another group 1A metal. Uh, has one valence electron. So potassium, when it loses that valence electron, forms a plus one cation. Um, sulfate, one of the polyatomic ions that we covered uh, by way of Nick the Camway to clam for supper. Sulfate is supper. It's S-O. Uh, there are four consonants in supper. There are two vowels, so it's a minus two charge. So here I've got potassium that's a plus one charge, sulfate that is a negative two charge, and I need a least common multiple of one and two. Smallest number that one and two will both go into is two. So with my one, my plus one, to get a two, I need to double that. I need to multiply that by two. Sulfate, in order to get a two, since it is a minus two, I simply just need to multiply that by one. So my formula here is K2. I don't need the parentheses since the subscript is one here. I'm going to leave that off as well as the parentheses. So it's K2SO4. Now if I do this one uh, with Legos, once again I'll let the orange Lego here represent my potassium. Uh, potassium is a plus one, so it's a single studded Lego. Sulfate, on the other hand, this is, this is my minus two. So I'm going to use a Lego that has two ports. Well, when I snap these together, if I simply just put one potassium here, notice it's not complete. It's not filled up. I don't have that, as we mentioned before, mathematically, that least common multiple. So in order to make that block symmetrical, I need two of the potassiums. Each potassium is a plus one. I need two of them for every one sulfate. So I need two separate potassiums for each one sulfate. So the next formula that I, or next compound that I encounter here is copper 2 chloride. Now in previous studies we've talked about why uh, copper can have more than one uh, oxidation number, why it can have more than one charge, therefore it requires a Roman numeral. Uh, we've learned that when we learned about ionization energies and photoelectron spectroscopy and electron uh, pair repulsion and some of the things that we've talked about. So we understand why the 2 is there. We get into nomenclature and, and we know we have to put that because there's another copper. So this is copper 2. 
So I don't really have to go to the periodic table and look that up by way of a charge because I know this copper, by way of the name, has a two charge. Chloride, on the other hand, not a polyatomic ion, just simply a, a anion from the periodic table. It is a halogen. It's in group 7A, as we would call it. I'll, I'll sketch a dot diagram here for it. So in terms of it forming an anion, it's missing that one electron. So it would gain that one electron, making chlorine a negative one charge when it forms the chloride anion. So again, I want to put these together. I'm looking for a least common multiple of two and one. Smallest whole number, they both divide into as two. I need one of these for every two of those. Ready to write my final formula, Cu, Cl, Two. Again, no subscript one written, just simply CuCl2. This one will look somewhat similar to what we just did. I'm going to let uh, the green Lego here, the, the two studded Lego, be the copper. And this is going to be my chloride. It's uh, kind of hard to see, but it's clear there. And when I snap these together to try to form that, notice it's not complete. Chloride's a minus one, copper's a plus two, so I have to go get another chloride in order to complete out the block. So that would be copper to chloride. One copper for every two chlorides that connects to it, CuCl2. All right, the next one I'm gonna do, another um, transition metal that has a Roman numeral, nickel to sulfite, nickel to sulfite. So the Roman numeral tells me the charge on the nickel. Nickel is a two charge. Sulfite, if you remember, this is from uh, supper, from Nick the Camway to Clam for supper in Phoenix. It's like sulfate, but it's one less oxygen. Sulfate, we did from the four consonants. So sulfite would be three oxygens. Same charge as sulfate. Supper has two vowels, so that tells me this is a minus two charge. So I have a plus two and a minus two. Looking for the least common multiple of two and two. Smallest number they both divide into is two. I need one of these for every one of those. My formula is NiSO3. Uh, I'll let the, the blue Lego, the two studded Lego, because of nickel being a two charge, that's gonna be my nickel. And I'll let the, I've got the green Lego. Green Lego will be my sulfite, it's a minus two, it's got two ports there. So when I snap these together, I don't need anything else. They snap together to make that symmetrical block because nickel is a plus two, the sulfite is a minus two, one nickel at plus two, one sulfite at minus two, and I snap those together and I get that one to one ratio. Same thing we see when we write the formula from the name. Next one I have is aluminum oxalate. Aluminum, from the periodic table, it's in group, what we may call group 3A, three valence electrons. So when it forms a cation, it loses those electrons, forming the aluminum plus three cation. Oxalate's one of the polyatomic ions that we added there at the end of the list for memorization, and that was C2O4 with a minus two charge. So I've got a plus three and a minus two. This is where sometimes the mathematics gets a little bit tougher, a little bit more difficult to understand. Maybe uh, doing this by way of the Legos will help you uh, visualize what's taking place when we put these together to make the formula for aluminum oxalate. Aluminum's a plus three, oxalate's a minus two, least common multiple of two and three is six. I need two of those to give me the positive six for every three oxalates. So my answer, simply just by doing least common multiple and doing the mathematics, is Al2. I do need the parentheses now because I have something other than a 1 outside of there. So C2O4, close parenthesis, subscript 3. So for my aluminum, I need something that's going to be represented by a plus 3 charge. So I'm going to use this uh, white 3-studded Lego to represent the aluminum. I'll use the blue two ported Lego here uh, to represent the oxalate. So when I snap these together, starting lining up the ends, notice I've got this empty spot. So I need to try to come up with something in order to fix that empty spot. So 
course, I'm going to get another Lego with ports in it. Another two ported identical Lego to the Oxalate. Well, now I end up with this problem because now I've got an empty spot here with the port. So I'm going to go get another aluminum, another three studded white Lego. Bring that in, snap it down. And again, I've got a problem. And it seems like it's never ending, but fortunately here with the next one, another two ported Lego. I snap it in and I get that structure. I end up with, taking it back apart, I end up with two aluminums for three oxalates. AL203 aluminum oxalate. The next one I'm going to do is cobalt 2 phosphate, again a, a Roman numeral uh, transition metal. Cobalt 2 has a 2 charge. Phosphate came from Phoenix, or Nick the Camel ate a clam for supper in Phoenix. Phoenix has four consonants and it has three vowels. So phosphate is PO4 with a minus three charge. I've got cobalt two plus two and phosphate at a minus three. And I want to put these together to, to write the formula for cobalt two phosphate plus two minus three, similar to the last one. The least common multiple here is six. So I need three of these for every two of those. Again, if you're good with least common multiples, that's the quick, the easy way to do it. We go ahead, we write our formula, CO3, parenthesis, needed because something other than one outside of the parentheses, PO4, close parenthesis, subscript two. Or if we're struggling with uh, the least common multiple idea, I need something here uh, that can represent a two charge. I'm gonna use the blue, two studded Lego to represent my cobalt. And for the phosphate as a minus three, I'm gonna use the white that has the three open ports. So I snap them together, cobalt two, phosphate minus three. It's evident that I'm not done. Get another cobalt, fill in that empty spot. Once again, I'm not done. Get another phosphate, put the port or the stud into the port, still not done, final step. And now you can see we've got it. We've got cobalt, that was a plus two. It took three of those for every two phosphates. So we end up with CO subscript three phosphate, PO4 in parentheses, subscript two. Cobalt two phosphate. Uh, the last one I'm gonna do here is ammonium monohydrogen phosphate. So I threw a couple of a uh, little more difficult polyatomic ions to work with, not really any more difficult in terms of, of writing the formula once you have these, these memorized. So ammonium, one that we memorized from earlier, is NH4 with a plus one charge. Monohydrogen phosphate, uh, we could start with our phosphate from using the word phoenix, which is four oxygens minus three charge for phosphate. When I put a hydrogen on here, Hydrogen's in group 1A, it's a plus one charge. Now this is no longer a minus three, but instead this is a polyatomic ion with a minus two charge. So I've got a plus one, minus two, least common multiple of one and two is two. So I need two of these. Because it's a polyatomic ion, I'm gonna put parentheses around it. And temporarily, I need one of these over here. Ready to write my formula. I end up with NH4 in parentheses, two, two ammoniums. And since there's a subscript one outside of here, I don't need the parentheses, nor do I need the subscript, so just simply HPO4. NH4, subscript two, HPO4. Uh, ammonium, we use something there that was a, a positive one, so I'll use uh, this orange single studded Lego to represent that. Uh, for a minus one, I'll use the, the green for the monohydrogen phosphate two ported Lego, and we're not done. It's evident there's another port there, so we get another single studded ammonium, and now we're done. Two ammoniums for each monohydrogen phosphate.